hidden away in the keyboard section of the sound browser, GarageBand Sampler is a surprisingly powerful way to capture, edit and play back pretty much any sound you can think of. Let's check it out. GarageBand Sampler looks very similar to a lot of its other keyboard-based touch instruments. You have the section up the top where all the action happens and a playable keyboard in the bottom half. Let's jump right in and sample some sounds. We Froggy here is first up. He produces a nice sound that we can use when struck on the head with a big stick. Sorry Froggy. If I hit the big red button, the sampler will start recording and will continue to do so until I hit stop. I'm left with this waveform which plays back when I press any key on the sampler's keyboard. Now I only want one of these hits, I don't want all of them to play back every time I hit a key. So I can edit which part of the sample is played by dragging and dropping the arrows in the bottom corners. Now the only part of the waveform in between the two arrows will play back when I touch a key. That pitch may be a bit too high, so I can bring the sample down an octave by hitting details here and turning the coarse tuning dial down to minus 12 much better. If I then want to record my sample into my project, all I have to do is hit record at the top of the screen and play away. The sample is recorded as MIDI, so if there are any timing hiccups when playing back the sample, I can tap on the region tap settings and then use quantization to fix it. Now I can go ahead and add some other sounds using my personal collection of highly specialised musical equipment. I want to use this mug sound for a pie hat like thing, so I'll isolate the hit that I want to use. Then pitch it up an octave using the coarse tune knob again. Sounds good and it's ready to record. The comb is good for a weird swooping effect, but if I hit the reverse button, I think it sounds even cooler. The clap sounds pretty good, though I need to adjust the velocity so it hits a bit harder without me having to pound my iPad's screen. I only want to keep a single note of the music box sound so that it's playable on the keyboard.
Also, the initial sound is almost quite clangy when you play it back, so I can adjust these points to delay the attack slightly and eliminate that. I can also use the mod wheel to give it a slightly more interesting sound. And the puffin sound, well, I want to use that as a bass, believe it or not, so I'll chop it down to just a small part of the sampled sound. Then in the details menu, tune it down by two octaves, which gives me this. Put all of that together and... Well, I don't think I'll be up for a Grammy nod this year, but you get the gist. If you'd rather work with pre-existing sounds, right up at the top here is your sample library. Note that on iPhone, you'll need to tap the little triangle menu in the top left of the screen to get here. From here, you can access any previously created samples and use some of Apple's pre-recorded sounds. or you can import other audio clips. You can add loops from GarageBand's loop library, compatible audio files from your files app, and tracks from the music app, though bear in mind that copyright protected songs and songs not stored locally on your device can't be imported. And you can use all of the editing features I covered earlier to chop up and mangle pre-existing loops and sounds however you please, though it's worth mentioning that you can't retain the tempo of longer samples when playing them at different pitches. Right, that's everything you need to know to start having fun with GarageBand's sampler. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and if you can give that like button a good hard slap on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to learn the ins and outs of some of GarageBand's other instruments, watch this next. <laughs>